surprise on the way out, we just met Bollock, the largest of the bears in the sanctuary. 600 kilos, is that right? Yeah. 600 kilos! If you're new here, my name's Emily and this is my partner Jordan. We're currently in the incredible country of Romania and about halfway through an epic road trip where we've seen some awesome sights, eaten some delicious food and even explored the beautiful Apicini Mountains. Today, we are in the Brasov region of Transylvania and plan on spending the next three days exploring a 13th century citadel, touring Dracula's castle, <laughs> and hopefully meeting some cute bears at the world's largest brown bear sanctuary. I am genuinely worried for our future budget because renting a car is incredible. We got to drive all the way here so easily and now we're in a town that has a 13th century citadel. It's the best. There's so much freedom and comfort in having a car and this town looks so freaking cute. I feel like we're going to be pretty good castle hunters. One down and it's been like 20 minutes. <laughs> Are you sure we can get up there from here? <laughs> it's like straight up a cliff. <laughs> That they've made all of the bins look like a mini turret or a mini castle. <laughs> really gets you in the zone. That hike really wasn't too bad, it was what, 500 metres? You can apparently get these tractors up, they're running like up and down continuously. I don't know how much that would be, but not worth it. Castle! I reckon we can say that we successfully hunted and found this castle. I did read online a couple of times people were saying that it's completely closed but surely if you can get this close like it's worth it to see the outside under construction since 2019 and it's not expected to be complete until 2023. Down. Doesn't feel like we hiked up that high. Apparently built in the 13th century to defend the towns of Romania from the Turks. And I don't see how anyone would, would be able to take this castle. Also, I'm mega sweaty. <laughs> yeah, it's so hot today. The sun is out. Not bad for castle hunters one. <laughs> I was just thinking that, but it makes it sound like the castles are like eluding us. <laughs> Not very well signed tourist attractions. <laughs> Mm. Either way, we're winning. <laughs> Brasnov was amazing. It's such a cute town and a cool castle. Pity it's shut for renovations, but we're definitely used to that at this point in the trip. 17 minutes and we will be at Bran Castle. too busy for us today. Luckily we built a day in between our trip here 
So we're gonna go back to the hotel now and come up really early tomorrow morning. Look at this, this car park was absolutely chock-a-block yesterday, but we're here a bit after 8 a.m. and we're the only ones. Little tidbit, the castle doesn't actually open until nine, so we've got about 50 minutes to kill, but we're gonna walk around because there's cafes and it's like parkland and it looks really cool when it's not flooded with cars. <laughs> we're so early, there's no coffee shops open, so we just started wondering. Wandered through this like makeshift market with tents and we've come to like an old traditional village right at the foot of the castle which I really didn't expect. It's a traditional style house from the 1840s. This is how people lived. There's still 20 minutes to open and look at all these It does make sense because it's the number one thing to do in Romania, pretty much. I don't like people. <laughs> Thanks, have a good day guys. And we're in and there's not that many people. There's a lot of people coming though, so let's hurry. So this is marketed as Dracula's castle. Apparently, the guy who Dracula's based off, Vlad the Impaler, never actually stepped foot in here though. Very tourism focused. <laughs> the one tenuous connection is that the guy who invented Dracula saw a picture of this castle. <laughs> but the description of the castle in the books is not like this either, so... <laughs> definitely helped there's still lots of people but it's a lot quieter than we've seen it and a lot quieter than we saw the car park yesterday the courtyard is amazing and they have all of these depictions of Vlad the Impaler who Dracula is based off of he was like this really bad guy and really into torture and like really messed up so it's like creepy and cute at the same time <laughs> Some bits. <laughs> oh, we're in the courtyard. I loved it. Definitely glad we came first thing in the morning because the amount of people behind us is mind blowing and it doesn't stop. The queue is just going and going and going. It's really busy. Like it's absolutely the number one thing to do in Romania according to the internet. Google will tell you to go there no matter what, but it also tells everyone else to go there. So it's full on. It's like a line to get in, lines the whole way through, really busy. Like we were there half an hour early and there was already a line. I think I might be a little bit castled out. We got templed out towards the end of our Asia visit and I really didn't think it would happen with medieval castles, but I think it has. And also the quality is all over the place. Like Corvin Castle, the outside looked incredible. Inside was like plastered like new, it was really weird. Here the outside's pretty cool again, but the amount of tourists just kind of take away from it and I know we're tourists too <laughs> we are part of the problem I think the difficulty is we love waking up early and getting to monuments or places and having them like to ourselves or at least to like a very small group of people yeah whereas this and Corvin Castle were just like crazy amount of people so many people <laughs> 
like it's good it's like a good tourist attraction it does just make me laugh that it actually doesn't have anything to do with dracula yeah but they call it dracula's castle tomorrow we are going to the bear sanctuary here in brasov region which is meant to be like the biggest in romania in the world in europe biggest somewhere running a little bit late Romania is home to 60% of Europe's brown bear population and this morning we're going to the largest brown bear sanctuary in the entire world. All through this road trip in Romania we kind of expected to see bears on the side of the road because they're meant to be ubiquitous, they're meant to be everywhere here. And there is a chance we'll see them on the trans highway that we're doing soon. But I don't want to run the risk of not seeing a bear in Romania so we're going to the sanctuary. <laughs> From being like 10 minutes early to making it by two minutes. <laughs> Thought we were late, but we seem to have made it in good time. I haven't shown anyone our tickets yet. We're not really sure how this works. It's like a crowd of people. <laughs> we're just waiting in the crowd in the mob. Thank you. Let's go ahead. So this means that we're allowed to use the camera wherever we want. It did cost 50 lei, which was more expensive than I thought it was going to be, but I'd rather not have to try and hide it from people, so... Not bad. We just watched a movie and it was about the origin story of the Liberty Bear Sanctuary and Maya, the bear that started it all. She was essentially kept in a cage and the owner of this place came across her, would visit her every single day, 60 kilometre drive. Eventually Maya unfortunately passed away, but she likes to say that Maya died so that Liberty Bear Sanctuary could live. 118 brown bears. When the fences have their names and the date when they arrived here, most of our bears are rescued from captivity because I'm going to tell you the stories about those uh, two that are here and I think I'm going to start with uh, the one closer to us. So this one closest to us is Andy and Andy is actually my favorite bear because he's not from captivity like most of our bears are, he's from the forest. And I always tell people about Andy that he's a really foodie bear but he's also a picky one. And he used to live in the forest, he used to go out to the cities to search for food. Well, when bears get out of uh, captivity, out of cages, and they get in a larger area, they don't know what to do with their freedom anymore. And when they're stressed out, they start walking like this, two steps up, two steps back, exactly the space uh, they used to have in captivity. Yeah. This is Andy and she just told us his story. Basically every single bear here has a heartbreaking story of why they're here. Andy was a wild bear, he crashed a wedding, got into some trouble and now he's here. They look after him really well but he has this stress trauma so he's walking the length of what his cage used to be because he's a bit stressed so we're moving on. <laughs> yeah, Sierra like Andy is one of our special bears because she's not from captivity, she's from the nature. She used to live in Azuga, a small mountain city in Romania. And one day there was a train passing by Azuga with a lot of food inside. So Sierra got inside the train, ate everything she found there and traveled with the train five kilometers, well, five hours, sorry, until she got to Ploiesti city. Where she got out of the train, she started walking around the city during the Christmas Eve. She keeps stopping and telling us stories and they're so good. Part of this sanctuary, they have like an adoption program and you can pay five euro a month to adopt a bear. There's also an option that lets you adopt a bear exclusively. It's a lot more expensive, but we just saw a bear that has been exclusively adopted by Luna Lovegood. I knew she was a good person. I knew she loved animals. Yeah. We just learned that the bears hunt in their enclosures and they can find berries and stuff but also they get food from the shops. So when in Romania, if there's food that's two days from expiring, they have to throw it out. The bear sanctuary gets it at a discounted price and that makes up the bulk of their food. They give them two tons of food a day, two tons. 
also got to meet a bear whose story was they used to be in the circus. They basically started refusing going into the arena, so the owner starved them for days and days and days, and then just gave up on the bear, called the sanctuary and was like, I don't want it anymore. And they're smart enough that when they feel ill, they come to this gate by themselves, cry, and they know that the people are gonna come help them here. Isn't that so nice? Yeah. And they don't have to put them to sleep, they just willingly jump in the car and ride to the vet. Love it. It's just such a special place. Like I knew it was gonna be a bit of an emotional day because I knew there was gonna be all the stories of the bears. But it's just so heartbreaking knowing what they went through, knowing that they're being so well looked after now by people who genuinely care about them. It's really nice. They also have wolves at this sanctuary, so we just met the only one that is 100% wolf, and we're about to go meet the other two that have like a mix in them. And we got to see one of the bears that's in quarantine, which is an area they sort of put the elderly bears or the sick ones. But Brigitte just straight up doesn't like people, so she's out there because she doesn't like anyone. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> Surprise on the way out, we just met Bollock, the largest of the bears in the sanctuary. 600 kilos, is that right? Yeah. 600 kilos! He's so cute, he has these two tufts of hair. I love it. <laughs> and that's it, that's the end of the tour. We're heading back to the car now. It was great. Saw neck, I think something bit me. Oh, the sun's so bright. <laughs> <laughs>